Okay, in this video, we're going to look at some simple Hall Effect circuits. Now, I've already made a video on Hall Effect switches and the difference between a threshold and a linear Hall Effect switch. And I'll link that video in the description box below. But in this video, we're going to look at building a high sensitivity Hall Effect circuit. And I'll be using a linear Hall Effect switch. I'll be using the OH49E, which you can see on the breadboard. Now, if I bring a magnet up close to the Hall Effect switch, it's a south-facing magnet. South Pole, you can see the sensitivity, you can see the threshold distance. See it's pretty sensitive. I'm going to, I'm going to add an LED to the circuit. And this LED will actually will show the transition a little bit better. This is the inverted signal of the LED on the bottom. So we could actually see the transition. We'll do it again. You can see the transition between the on and off. You can see it's pretty sensitive. I also have a small magnet. This is a rare earth magnet. It actually picks that up. It's pretty sensitive. Also have a magnet out of a hard drive. See, it picks that up. Actually picks it up on the back side too. So you can see this is it's a pretty sensitive circuit. It's more sensitive than the threshold type Hall Effect switch. Okay, I've mounted my Hall Effect switches onto a breadboard. And the one we see here is a threshold Hall Effect switch. This is the A3144E, and I have a magnet, and that's the south pole that's being exposed. So if I bring the south pole of this magnet close enough to the Hall Effect switch, you can see it's being triggered. And you can see a little bit of hysteresis there. The on distance and off distance is different, so there's no chatter when she switches. I go from side to side. Okay, here's my first simple Hall Effect circuit. So I have a linear Hall Effect switch, a threshold potentiometer, and an op amp. Now the op amp is configured as a voltage comparator, and it's comparing two voltages. The first voltage is from the Hall Effect switch, which is around 2.5 volts when there's no magnets nearby. And a second voltage is from the potentiometer, which is the basic voltage divider from the VCC or 5 volts. Now when I apply a south pole magnet to the face, of the Hall Effect switch, the output voltage of the Hall Effect switch exceeds the threshold voltage set by the potentiometer and it triggers the circuit. So we could adjust the potentiometer threshold to get the most sensitivity. So we could adjust it so it just, it just uh, transfers over like you see there. Now I'm using the 5534 op amp as, a, as the voltage comparator because it has a good source and sync drive. So I'm sourcing the bottom LED and I'm syncing the top LED. But if you can't find a 5534 op amp, you could use the UA741. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. And you can see the three main components, the 5534 op amp, which is configured as a voltage comparator, because you can see there's no feedback resistors. But if you want, you could add a resistor from pins 2 to pin 6 to get a little bit of hysteresis. Now the 5K ohm pot, that's your threshold potentiometer. And a Hall Effect switch is the OH49E, which is a linear Hall Effect switch. Now, when you, when you bring a self pole magnet in close proximity to the Hall Effect switch, the voltage on pin 3 will increase 2 millivolts per Gauss. That will be fed into pin 3 of the op amp. Now, when the voltage on pin 3 exceeds the voltage on pin 2, the output pin 6 will go high and turn on the bottom LED. That's your on LED. Now, when you remove the magnet from the Hall Effect switch, the voltage on pin 2 now will be higher than the voltage on pin 3 and pin 6 will go low and sync the current through this, the top LED which is the off LED. Okay, I removed the threshold potentiometer from the circuit from the breadboard and I replaced the potentiometer with a second Hall Effect switch. You can see here I've added to the breadboard and I positioned it so it's back to back to the first Hall Effect switch. Now by doing this I'm actually increasing the sensitivity of the first Hall Effect switch. Now the Hall Effect switches are powered by 5 volts and if there's no magnets nearby, the output voltage will be 2.5 volts or half VCC. Now as we apply a south pole magnet to the face of the Hall Effect switch, the output voltage will increase by 2 millivolts per Gauss. Now this is positive Gauss. Now if we apply a north pole magnet to the face of the Hall Effect switch, we'll get an output voltage decrease of 2 millivolts per Gauss. And that's negative Gauss. Now, Gauss is a measurement of magnetic flux density. Now, a larger unit is Tesla, and 10,000 Gauss is one Tesla, and we'll be using Gauss in this video. 
Now if I apply the north face magnet to the back of the Hall effect switch, that's the same as applying a south facing magnet to the front of the Hall effect switch. So because of this feature, and by adding a second Hall effect switch back to back to by the first Hall effect switch, we actually increase the sensitivity of the Hall effect switch. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my second Hall effect circuit where I'm using two linear Hall effect switches, the OH49Es, configured back to back, and both outputs are fed into the 5534 op amp, which is configured as a voltage comparator. Now, when we bring a south pole magnet to the face of the first Hall effect switch, the output on pin 3 will be positive Gauss. It will be, it will be positive 2 millivolts per Gauss increase voltage into pin 3 of the op amp. But since the south pole magnet is feeding the back end of the second Hall effect switch, the output of that switch will be negative Gauss, so the voltage will decrease 2 millivolts per Gauss into pin 2. So as the magnet is coming closer to the Hall effect switches, pin 3 is increasing, but pin 2 is decreasing, so it's coming down to meet pin 3. So it's making it easier to trigger. So, so, so the op amp will trigger at a lower Gauss level, because pin 2 is coming down as pin 3 is going up. So the second Hall effect switch is out actually helping out the first Hall effect switch by dropping its voltage as pin 3 is going up. So that's how it gets its, its sensitivity with the two Hall effect switches. And then when the pin 3 is higher than pin 2, pin 6 will go high, which will turn on the, the bottom LED, which is the on LED. So that's how the circuit works. That's how the two Hall effect switches, one of them makes the other one more sensitive by dropping its voltage as the, as the other voltage is coming up. Okay, now you know how the circuits work, so you could breadboard your own Hall effect circuits. And the Hall effect switches that I'm using here are pretty cheap, they're about 50 cents online. And the op amp you can get from less than a dollar online, so it's a pretty inexpensive circuit. So all you need to get yourself some uh, magnets and play around with the circuitry. Maybe come up with your own ideas for your own little sensors. So hope this video gave you some ideas how you can incorporate Hall effect uh, sensors in your own projects.